Hello everyone! As we have tried out a lot of Animate Diff video to video in Comfy UI, recently I have went back to Animate Diff workflow to play around with unsampling with segmentation. By using this method, I am able to get some consistency style transfer generated video on a specific masking region or an object. The examples below demonstrate the steps involved in sampling, beginning with unsampling noise and progressing through latent sampling and refiner sampling. It's not only for restyle background, also able to do the front ground object that you want. Let's check it out. Okay, let's take a brief look at this workflow today. We're going to see something really cool, which I enhanced by adding a few more sampling steps later. The final result is seamless in every aspect, Here's our source video, which features a bike rider. We will use this as a demo motion, and I got it from the clean AI generate result. I have created several such motions and tested them with both humans and natural environments. And this is the bike ride result I have, and we can try this one on here. I set it to 10 image frames just for demo purposes. And we set the width and height that are normal procedures and pass that to the two object selection methods. So the first one is a very easy one for removing backgrounds, making the backgrounds all black, and it will focus only on the objects. But sometimes in this situation, fast motions, it is not suitable for using the remove backgrounds from the image method. So we are not going to use this method this time. And we have another option, which is using the segmentation by SAM2. So the SAM2 can be very flexible in using it for segmenting objects and tracking objects in the videos. For example, this time we are using the point editor. Now we have played around with segmentation anything to models before, and we were using Florence 2 to select the objects that we want to track. But right now we can use point editor. This is another way to track an object, and you can visually look at which objects you want to keep tracking on in the video and just add those pointers on top of that. So here's one pointer tracking. But you will see that once I press run, it will sometimes not track over all of the characters or the objects that we want. So for example, in here, if I just put only one tracking point, it will have some missing parts of the bike as well. So in this case, we will do multiple tracking points on the video objects. So press shift on your keyboard and click your mouse and you will create another tracking point. The easiest way is all the joints and the part of the character, as well as the bike object itself, will be dual tracking, and also the bike tire. Sometimes it will be missing as well. So we track all of that, and let's click one more time run and see how that result goes. And we got better, a little more, more detail. So we will use this one for the coming video generations. And right here, this is another group for selecting the image masking options. So number one, which is remove backgrounds. And number two, when we select two in here, we will use the second option. So the SAM2 or option two in here. So once we pass the remove background image, which in this case is this segment object result here, we will pass that as the remove background image frames and we pass the masked area and also the inverted mask area into the upcoming process. So come back to here whenever we test the source videos. If we want to keep track of the segmentations on the point editor, we will first enable only these three groups, and then after that, we will enable the other rest of the groups here to do the video processing. So the later mask condition control net and the unsampling and resampling. And also I got another one added for the anime div sampling too, which is a second pass to enhance and smoothen the motions of the videos. So when we have that enabled, first we go to the latent mask and take a look at those groups in here. The latent mask setup basically means we are going to load the checkpoint models. We have the VAE as well. We have aligned your steps and scheduler. So in this one, we are going to select SD1 because we are using the SD 1.5 checkpoint models. If you use SDXL or SVD, etc., you will select the other options. And I am going to use 25 steps in this case. And we have the K sampling select here to just have very easier organization for our sampling steps in a multiple case sampler or custom sampler. And right here, we create our latent, initial latent data. And from here, we set our masked area, which options we want to mask our upcoming videos. 
we want to transfer to another style. So the style transfers in here with, in this case, we are using the mass frame inverted. So which is the invert mass of what we have in these videos? For the demo of these videos, we will have the black area, which is the backgrounds to do the style transfer, and we will remain the bike and the biker itself as the original from the source videos. So go back to here, as I have put the note on every mask selection. So you guys are going to be easier to identify which mask you are going to choose. So if you want to animate the backgrounds, do a style transfer for that, and you will select the mask frame invert. If you use the objects from the segmentation tool as the mask objects to do style transfer, then you select the mask frame, which is also available in this drop down menu. So this time we are going to use the invert mask, which means we are going to animate the backgrounds. And the next step we are going to check out is the conditions and control net. We are going to use mostly the depth map by using the preprocessors, depth, anything preprocessor. And the next one is going to be the soft edge preprocessors that are running for the second control net. We are masking the invert mass in the soft edge and right here, if we are totally animating the backgrounds from other styles without any line trace from the source videos, like for example, in here we have a lot of the speed going motions and there's a highway in the background and we don't want that, maybe we want something totally different, then we are going to select only the remove background image, which is the mask video from the SAM2 or the mask result from the remove image backgrounds method. So it's going to be a black color here. All will be invert masks as our creativity area. Then if you want to retain the source video backgrounds and just do coloration style transfer, then you are going to select the initial frame, resize frames from our source videos. Then you will have all the styles from all the elements from our source videos, which are in this example. The high speed motions of on this highway will have all these things going on in the background included in this control net as well. So for me, I like to choose to remove BG. Just want to have the control net for the biker and the bike itself and go to the next step, which is the example. In this example, we are going to have, well, this is a very typical way to do it using animate diff and we have a SGMA here. This is the important thing because of that we don't have any additional sampling noise injected into our data and also we got the initialized latent data from the top of the previous group here. Then we come back to here and just pass all this data to the sampler customs. We don't add any noise so set it as false and set the latent output to another group which is resampling this which is the first sampling in this workflow for the animate diff to add some styles, whichever you want to do in here. So in this case, I add an IP adapter, very typical way to do style transfer. And before the evolved samplings from animate diff, we pass the model data to IP adapter, adding this style. So for example, we have this image for styling and we are going to pass the model data output as the seconds, as the second sampler customization notes in here. But in this case, we are going to add noise. So we got to inject our data noise from the IP adapter. Inject the data noise from the masking area as well. So again, in this resampling, I have also labeled this select mass frame, whichever you are going to choose. If you choose to use again backgrounds, then using this frame invert choice, then you follow this yellow note and you are pretty easy to deal with. And also I have included another note in here to just remind you guys to select backgrounds or the front grounds of the segmentation objects and then you are good to go. Remember just synchronize. All these options have to be the same one. So when I highlight all these yellow notes and the blue color notes in here, select the same options on each of these. Then you are synchronized to do the masking for whichever choice you make. Then come back to here. We will have a resize frame for the image and we have a resize for the mask as well. Just to be more secure, make sure everything is in the same dimensions. Because sometimes after samplings and after some masking process, the pixels are going to be slightly different and it won't be working. In the image composite mask process, 
Sometimes you have different width and height between the destinations and the source. It won't work. So make sure. Yeah, this is one secure way to just make sure both generated videos and the original mask of the source videos are in the same dimensions and we pass our first animated sampling videos to preview and also it will appear on here the video sampling one, it will be showing in this video combined and then the add sampling tool, which is another animative sampler. In this case, I am smoothing the frame of the mask because you will see that from the unsampler and the resampling, even in the resampling, there is still some noise going on when it's generated. So we want to smoothen those areas and between the mass and the invert mass area. So for example, in here, the bike, this guy, the, the outline of these objects, you will see what I'm talking about when I run this. There will be some noise going on and we have to use the canny edge. So the canny edge highlighted the outline of the objects. We will use the outline blur to just blur a little bit of the mass area and we can enhance those smoothens away from the outline place of the generated videos and we have a better result. And also adding another second pass animate diff and another animate control net checkpoint for the control net to just enhance the motions more smoothly in another sampling step. Then at the final here, we will see, we will going to see four images or the video preview in here. And lastly, we are going to have the auto adjust for the color. And again, the layer styles, custom notes, pretty handy stuff. Just a quick way to do color adjustments and contrast, brightness, all that stuff here. And if you have a character like a close up shot, you have a big face in front of the camera. You can do a reactor face swap just for restoring the face after all the sampling. But then in this case, this bike ride motions videos, we don't need that in this case. So we can bypass this for just a quicker way to not load this stuff. So let's try this and we can see how that goes. So after generating these mountain bike videos, I got another result. Now here I'm using another image, which will look a little better for mountain biking videos. As you can see, the first video preview here is from an unsampling result. And here, the second one is a resampling result. As you can see, there's still some noise. You see some blue dot color flickering around the objects. We got another enhancement in the second sampling, the second pass that smoothens everything from these motions and the bike as well as the character. It doesn't have those flickering blue dot noise flying around the objects. I did the last one, which is the color adjustments using some contrast, strength, brightness, and setting those colorations of the final video result. So that's the whole process of this video for the bike. If you want to start over with other animations, first turn off the other groups and only enable the first three groups to do a preview of the segmentations and also the remove backgrounds preview. See which objects method you prefer. Here, I'll do another second example. So here we've got another video from Kling AI, which is a boat floating on the sea and a guy sitting on this small boat. Let's try out this example. Let's say I want to style transfer the seawater to lava. This time we'll try to pick some images. Let's say we go to Google and type lava and get some styles of lava. We'll transform those seawater waves as lava moving and we'll do that in this example. For the point editor, first we have to clean up those previous points. We click the new canvas button, let it generate the first image preview for us, and we can select the objects. In this example, we're going to select the boat and the guy sitting on top, and the rest of the image will be used for style transfer animations in this video to video process. Once it's prepared, finish loading the first method, which is remove background. We're not going to use this one as well, because the object is kind of complex we have something missing from the mask. Right here, we have the point editor. Again, we have to make more points, cover the objects that we want to segment and select multiple points and run again. As you can see, we have a clearer segmentation, but we're still missing some details here. So let's add two more points and render it again, and we'll see better segmentation objects. This time we got a better image and video animations for segmentations of the objects that we want to do for these animations. Then we come back here to the group bypass there to enable all the other groups for video processing. Now we're going to animate the lava so we grab the image, drag it into this load image for IP adapter. Then we can simply start running this video. So run it again 
and wait for the result and we'll come back. Here's the halfway point of the generations. We're still waiting for the second pass of the animate diff sampler, but we've already got the first two video previews. The first one is from the unsampling, and the second one is the resampling for the IP adapter as well. And here we've got the composite of the source video objects that we have for the second one. Actually, as you can see, there's still some noise. Those blue dots represent the image noise that's coming from the unsampling. We have to wait for the second pass to enhance that noise, make it smoother. We just got the second pass rendered finish. As you can see, the whole video animation is completed and uh, we've got pretty fine-tuned animations this time for this lava and boat animation. But of course, in reality, the lava would melt the boat. In AI, we can make something that is fantasy stuff. Here we have another example with the IP adapter, which is ice and some snow, like a North Pole style. And we did another generation here. Previously, I talked about this one. At the beginning of the video, we have to fine tune the edge of the mask and the backgrounds. In this group, in the second sampling groups, we're using the canny edge to define those edges between the mask objects and the backgrounds. This time I'm choosing the mask frame. You can also use the mask invert if you just want to smoothen the edge of the background, but I want to smoothen the boat area so the line between those backgrounds and the objects is going to be smoothened. As you can see, the first unsampling process still has some noise, uh, some blue dot flickering. The second image, the video preview here is getting better. And of course, the third one, we have the second sampling video result, which is way better. The last one is the color adjustment. That's your freedom to do whatever color adjustments you like. Let's try some other video examples here. This time, I've generated another one, selecting the foregrounds of the objects to do a style transfer. We'll keep the backgrounds, the urban city this time, like the source video that we have here. This time, I'll only segment the foreground objects in this case, which is the woman dancing in the front. Again, sometimes we have to compare which segmentations or remove backgrounds method are doing better here. So always preview that before you continue to do the sampling process. Then it looks like we're still using SAM2 as a segmentation process. Then come back here. As you can see, I'm using another image for the IP adapter. We've got a black dress for the restyling and this is the video result. So the first video and always the second video preview here is going to be appear a little diff noise between the objects and the backgrounds. That's normal. We refine that in the second sampling using another animate diff. And we also enhance the overall motions using the control net as well. Then we've got, in this case, a face of the character. So after the color adjustment, I bring some light source brighter. Then we'll go to the face swap to restore a clear face after the animate diff generated. And so that will be pretty complete for these motions. As you can compare with the source video here, we put a side-by-side -side compare on top of that and the motions. Unless we're doing a style transfer without too much noise interrupting or diffusing the backgrounds, we only animate the foregrounds or the selected characters. So that's it for this video. The workflow and more detail about how to do setting are going to be in my Patreon community. So have fun, my Patreon supporters, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.